the ever helpful staff at Underwoods of Colchester have kindly lent me the use of this Mazda MX-30 for the day so I can show you how to drive an electric car. In this video, not only am I gonna show you how to move and stop an electric car, but I'm gonna show you how to control it at very low speeds for parking and how to deal with hills. So firstly, how do you switch it on and how do you know that you're ready to go? Most electric cars have a push button start. At the moment, the steering lock's on. The first press of the button turns the steering lock off so you can move the wheel. The second press turns the ignition on so the electrics work, including the air conditioning, which is super helpful right now. It is really hot out there. But to get the car ready to go, normally you have to press the brake pedal, then press the start button and then it makes a noise and says it's ready on the dashboard so you know that the gas pedal, or should I say the go pedal, will now work. There's no petrol or diesel engine to make noise, so without this feature, you wouldn't know whether or not you're ready to go. To switch it off, you simply press the button. And if you wanna get it ready to go straight away, as soon as you get in, put your foot on the brake, press the start button, and straight away, you're ready to get going. Once the car's ready to go, you need to find D. Sometimes there's gonna be buttons, sometimes there's gonna be a little stick here, but most of the time there's gonna be a lever. P for park, R for reverse, N for neutral, which means no drive to the wheels, and D for going forwards, drive. Usually you have to put your foot on the brake and then push some kind of button. In this case, it's this button, I go to the left for R, and then back twice, and now I'm ready to go. Although the parking brake is on, most electric cars are gonna have electric automatic parking brakes. If I press the gas pedal now, I will go, but that's only if my seatbelt is on. If my seatbelt wasn't on, I'd have to hold the brake in and then press it down to turn the parking brake off. Now, all I need to do is come off the brake and it starts creeping. I can control the speed with the brake pedal to keep me slow, or if it's not going fast enough, I can add the gas to go faster, like most automatics. Some do creep forwards like this one does, without pressing the gas, but not all do. Some you will need the gas for, or should I say the go pedal? I keep saying gas. If you're wondering why I keep saying the go pedal, it's because I'm a driving instructor. And usually driving instructors say gas pedal because it's quick. It takes too long to say accelerator. However, in this electric car, saying gas, well, it kind of feels wrong. Once you're on the move, it's just like an automatic diesel or petrol car. Press the go pedal to go faster, come off the go pedal to slow down, and then you get what feels like an ordinary amount of engine braking. And if you wanna slow down more, use the brake pedal. Where it does differ, however, is something known as regenerative braking. When I come off the go pedal, the car starts slowing down and starts charging the battery and I can control how much it slows down when I come off the go pedal and how much it charges the battery. So if I come off the gas pedal now, or go pedal, and pull this paddle on the left, it slows down more, and I pull it again, it slows down even more, but charges the battery more. If I pull the paddle on the right, it slows down less and charges the battery less. There's three settings on this car and an off setting. When it's off, it kind of feels like you're coasting because when you come off the go pedal, the car, well, it rolls down a hill. Downhill you speed up and uphill you slow down, but you still maintain control of the car because the gas or the go pedal and the brake pedal still works. So it's not dangerous. Most electric cars give you a way to control how much regenerative braking you are getting. Usually it's paddles behind the steering wheel, but there can be different ways. Some cars have what's known as one pedal control, where you get so much regen braking that you can drive the car just using the go pedal. When you come off the go pedal, it slows down so quickly that you never really need to use the brake unless it's an emergency. So when you're driving with one pedal control, don't just drop the go pedal, come off it gradually because it will start slowing down quite quickly. Regen braking is also normally incorporated into the brake pedal. So when I press the brakes now, it will charge the battery even more. When I come off the brake, it charges it less. You have to be careful though, because some cars are better than others and you can feel the difference between regen braking and the brakes on the wheels working. However, I can say Mazda have nailed it. The brake pedal on this car, like most Mazdas, feels really good. Really good feel from the very top of the pedal and easy to modulate. But 
let's say I don't have one pedal control. What happens when I come off the go pedal? Does it stop or does it slow down but then continue? Let's find out. I'm gonna come off the go pedal now at 11 miles an hour. So I'm off the pedal, it's slowing down 10 miles an hour, nine, eight, six, five, still slowing a bit, four, still feels like it's slowing a bit, three miles an hour. Now it feels like it's not slowing at all. So it will slow to three miles an hour in this car and keep you going. Obviously that's gonna vary from car to car. And if you have one pedal control, it will go to a complete stop. This is a bit like a petrol or diesel car because when you're in first gear, when you come off the gas pedal, the car won't stop. Most of the time it will just slow down to about four or five miles an hour and then keep you moving. So you've just parked your car and you wanna get out and leave the car. What should you do? Well, find P, P means park, can be a rotary dial or buttons, this stick here or lever or some sort of stalk or stick here as I explained earlier. And what P does, park, is it locks the transmission so the car won't roll even on a hill, even without the brakes. But for more security, apply the parking brake. You normally have to have the foot brake on to do this and sometimes that can be a button. But if I turn the electric parking brake off, turning the car off normally automatically applies the parking brake. If you're wondering what N does, which means neutral, I'll show you. So I'll put it in neutral now make sure the brakes are off. And it means you can essentially push the car. There's nothing stopping you from pushing the car. There. Neutral also allows you to roll down a hill. So into neutral, off the foot brake, and it rolls down the hill. For whatever reason, you need to do this. And that neatly brings me onto hills. How do you control an electric vehicle on a hill? Well, it's quite simple. If you're in reverse, it's not gonna roll forwards. And if you're in drive, it's not gonna roll backwards, even if you're on a hill. So I'm gonna put it in reverse now and take the parking brake off. This is a very steep hill. It's one of the steepest in the area. The car really wants to roll forwards, but because I'm in reverse, it shouldn't. I'm gonna come off the foot brake and the car doesn't roll. If I wanna go backwards, I use the go pedal. More go pedal will speed me up and less will slow me down. And if I come off the go pedal, it will stop. This car actually does roll forwards ever so slightly on this really steep hill. It doesn't on the other hills in the area, just this really steep one. So I'm guessing that's just a software update, not what it's meant to do. Some electric cars will actually creep as well. When you come off the foot brake, regardless of the hill, it will creep backwards when you're in reverse or forwards when you're in drive. It does vary from car to car. So in that example, I was controlling the car going uphill, backwards uphill. What if I wanted to control the car slowly going downhill? Well, it's very easy. If you wanna go backwards, select reverse. And if you wanna go forwards, select drive. I wanna go forwards down this hill. So I'm gonna select drive, take the parking brake off. And then if it's safe, all I need to do is use the brake to control the speed. Less brake, I go faster, more brake, I slow down. I'm not coming off the brake completely because I may go too fast. I'm trying to stay very slow down the hill. If I do want to go faster, let's make sure it's safe again, come off the brake completely, and then I can add the go pedal to go faster. However, this car will creep in drive and reverse. So what I mean by that, if I put it in drive now and take the parking brake off, if I'm not on a hill and I come off the foot brake, it does roll forwards and I can control the speed with the foot brake. It will try and roll up to three miles an hour. If I put it into reverse now and come off a foot brake, again, it automatically rolls at three miles an hour and I can control the speed with the brake. The creep function makes parking an absolute doddle because you just use the brake to stay really slow, making maneuvering into very small difficult spaces a cinch. Many petrol and diesel automatics have had this feature for a very long time, most of them have, and I'm glad they've incorporated it into the electric car as well. However, just like petrol and diesel autos, how much creep you get on hills does vary from car to car. This car doesn't give you much creep on hills at all, so I have to use the go pedal. But you have to learn your car, and either way, you're gonna be using the brake to stay slow, or just a little bit of that go pedal. It's fairly simple. 
I would like to say thank you to Underwoods of Colchester for lending me this Mazda MX-30, completely free of charge for the day so that I could do this video for you. The staff there are very helpful and friendly. I've bought a car from them myself. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up and check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Conningwood can allow you to do that without affecting the owner's policy. Also via the link at the moment, it's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you're looking to insure your own car, check out confused.com as well, because you can compare many quotes by filling out one quote form. And you can change the car on that quote form as many times as you like to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links in the description does support the channel, but doesn't cost you anything. Check out Facebook and Instagram if you wish, they're both Concord Driving and subscribe to get my future videos. And until the next one, cheerio.